Uh, hello, I'm Isaki Yamahata. I'm working for Intel and working on KPM. In this session, I'd like to discuss about the status update of TDX KPM support as overview. Uh, in some topics, uh, there are another sessions on technical details. So for such point, yeah, please attend other sessions. At the first, let's recall what TDX and why. TDX stands for Trust Domain Extensions, and it provides hardware-protected VMs, VMM uh, from VMM or host firmware. They can see guest state, uh, memory state, and also CPU state. Uh, this is a uh, basic building blocks for confidential computing. Recently, demands for confidential computing is raising. Uh, like uh, recently, Linux Foundation uh, created uh, uh, created confidential computing consortium for it, and it means in cloud environment users want to protect their data in cloud, even in cloud environment, even from cloud service providers, not not for uh, other guests, but also yeah host side. Uh, there can be yeah multiple. Uh, multiple ways for CSP to uh, to to attack guest VM. And the yeah, TDX extensions uh, composed of uh, hardware extensions and also for software extensions. Uh, hardware side, yeah, there are CPU ISA extensions and also memory enc encryption. And in software side, side yeah, uh, there are new firmware Famias, which is called the TDX module. Uh, let's move on to uh, where to touch to support KVM for TDX. Basically, all related components need to be touched. Uh, Linux as host to load and initial, initialize uh, TDX module, the firmware, and also also, yeah, KVM uh, needs to be touched, of course, and to use uh, those extensions. And in KVM side, yeah, uh, KVM also needs to change, uh, especially in how to create a uh, guest initial memory image and run it. The last component is guest kernel. Let's see one by one. Uh, the first touch point, is Linux host kernel. TDX requires the firmware, which is known as uh, the TDX module. And uh, uh, this firmware is a part of TCP, and it requires a special loading procedure. And uh, it also, uh, the TDX module uh, tracks which page is protected, uh, which means which page is used for protected guest, and which is uh, not. And it requires a large, large physical contiguous memory. Uh, that is sim something similar to Linux page struct. And, uh, it, and uh, due to NUMA issues and uh, others, it requires complex calculation and to allocate uh, physical contiguous memory. Also, via CSF, CSFS, uh, the version information of the TDX module is exported. And also, uh, upstream plan is uh, to allow runtime update of the firmware without reboot. And also, yeah, KEXEC and KDAMP support is uh, also planned for upstream. Uh, basically, yeah, uh, especially KDAMP is uh, very important for uh, for crash analysis analysis and uh, after uh, K dump reboot, uh, basically uh, t the state of TDX module is unknown. So after uh, to bring back to to operating operating working state into OS uh, to bring OS into operating operating state, 
without uh, firmware, uh, without actual power cycle or firmware reboot, uh, we'd like to reboot by k-exec. And uh, uh, we need to bring uh, the TDX module state into the initial known state uh, by k-exec. That's a very tricky point. So let's move on to KVM. Uh, KVM MMIU also requires big change. The next, uh, we have a dedicated next slice point. Uh, in normal VMX case, uh, there are VMX instructions to operate, operate on VMX guest. And in TDX case, uh, the operation is done through SIM call, uh, the firmware call to the TDX module. And replace uh, VMX operation with a uh, SIM call to the TDX module. And uh, luckily, yeah, the x86 KVM already has uh, operation tables. So uh, it uh, mostly works without uh, big change. We only added uh, several new operations for TDX. Other change point is debugger support. Uh, QM supports GDB stop, stop. and uh, the current uh, implementation is QMU directly uh, reads writes memory state or CPU state, but for TDX it doesn't work. So we need to introduce a new operation for KVM to snoop uh, guest state and and then yeah to make QM to use it. Uh, debugger support is a big, a big, big feature. So uh, this is uh, split out from the first, first phase match. Okay, let's move on, move on to KVM MMU. Uh, the operation is a bit tricky. Uh, in TDX, uh, EPT is also protected and which is called Seki APT, and the KVM cannot directly access uh, Seki APT, and the uh, uh, KVM has to use a uh, SIM call to operate a uh, Seki APT, and uh, it costs uh, massive cycles. Uh, so for performance, uh, we keep uh, the existing conventional APT as a mirror of Seki APT. So that uh, the current existing EPT code can be reused, but uh, it doesn't, uh, CPU doesn't uh, look into it, but uh, CPU uses a second EPT. Okay, so the big change, last big change is unmapping private page from user space. For security reasons, we'd like to remove the mapping of the guest memory in QM or user space. The current best KVM design is to require user space mapping from from a, to remove uh, the user space mapping of the guest memory in QM or user space. The current best KVM design is to require user space mapping for guest memory. When guest memory is required, uh, it means EPT violation happened. Guest physical address is converted to host virtual address. And then get to user pages or its variant is used to get uh, corresponding host pages. Uh, therefore, that, uh, there are two proposals in the community. One proposal is to keep the mapping and reuse the existing page resolving code. The trick is to make uh, the uh, pro protection mode of the mapping as now, so that actually CPU doesn't uh, work uh, page tables. And there is a working POC for now. The other proposal is to introduce a new object uh, with file descriptor, and then uh, remove uh, user space mapping completely. It requires uh, to change KVM to get host pages based on guest physical address. Uh, discussion is ongoing and we are working on the actual implementation. And uh, we, uh, we hope yeah, we, can, uh, we can share our 
achievement. Okay, uh, last Linux change is guest change. Uh, some emulation uh, by KVM, KVM has to access guest memory. For example, MMI IO case, KVM passes guest instructions and understand its address and data to be written or to be read. But in TDX, KVM cannot access guest memory. Instead, a guest has to use hypercore uh, for MMIO so that to provide uh, all the necessary data to KVM. Uh, for that, uh, guest can be directly virtualized. Uh, or uh, guest can use uh, virtualization exception. If guest issues some instructions that requires a hypercore, uh, pound B is injected back to guest, and then guest uh, understands uh, what hypercore is needed, and then uh, issue hypercore uh, on behalf of the uh, actual instruction. Uh, this is introduced to mitigate uh, parabolization effort. Uh, effort, and also uh, and also yeah uh, for DMA device DMA, yeah, guess has to uh, balance balance uh, actual data to shared pages so that uh, KVM or uh, any backend, device backend can access to emulate uh, DMA. And the final thing is uh, uh, device filtering. Uh, the basic assumption is uh, guest doesn't trust hypervisor. So uh, guest doesn't uh, it, doesn't, it means a guest doesn't necessarily trust advertised features. For example, uh, KVM can advertise KVM clock, but guests should not uh, use it, but it should use TSC as a clock source. Uh, TSC is uh, fully virtualized uh, by the uh, TDX module, so that uh, TSC can be trusted. Okay, uh, let's move on to user space QMU changes. Uh, the change is actually yeah, very limited. First touch point is to create a uh, guest initial image. Uh, get, especially guest BIOS requires a special initialization uh, so that uh, necessary information is built uh, for guest firmware. Uh, second touch point is to disable uh, some features because uh, TDX doesn't support uh, some features uh, like SMM or uh, Reboot. Uh, for such uh, features, yeah, uh, those features need to be disabled and uh, make them not advertised. And uh, you know, such advertisement will be done via CPU ID or HPR table. And also, yeah, for uh, for those features, uh, for example, uh, interrupt uh, is only uh, supported uh, as edge interrupt. So level interrupt is not supported. Uh, some uh, logic in interrupt controller, IO APIC or uh, IO APIC, uh, it needs to be uh, modified. Uh, typically in QM case, yeah, such uh, unsupported features are uh, specific for underlying hypervisor, yeah, uh, they are silently ignored. Uh, for example, SMI is silently ignored if underlying uh, hypervisor doesn't support it, but uh, yeah, uh, it's not undesirable. So I'd like to make uh, it explicit. Uh, for example, uh, to for KVM uh, to return error to K QME and then QME uh, log it or adjust uh, about it. 
and another another desired feature GDB support. This requires medium sized change. The purchases will be separated from the first purchases. Okay, uh, just for completeness, in this slide, I cover other software components. Uh, there are uh, uh, four big change points. One big one is guest bias, uh, EDK2. Uh, it requires uh, it, it requires uh, some special uh, operation for EDK2 uh, to support TDX. Also, bootloader uh, requires some change, uh, especially Grab2. The most popular one is Grab2. Uh, another, uh, another area is uh, VM management layer. Uh, revert and op OpenStack. Uh, they need to know about TDX. Uh, for revert, yeah, uh, just we, we, we'd like to say just this guest VM is TTX. And then, yeah, necessary, uh, necessary GM command line will be built for TTX. Okay, yeah, uh, this slide summarizes uh, the current status of the TTX support. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening.